happy to be here. No, my mum is forcing me. Totally fine. I'll try and make it as fun as I can. As fun as you can make. Of course you did. Alright, so today's lesson is, excuse me, I forgot my wee beeper, is how to do understanding questions in the course reading exam in the Rui paper. Before we get on to the lesson, as always, today's word of the day, just to try and expand one's vocab, is cacophony. Ooh, sounds fancy. A cacophony, it sounds like you're actually coughing when you say it. What does cacophony mean? Well, it's a noun and it means an unpleasant mixture of loud sounds. So basically, pretty much classrooms as they were, possibly not for some time, unfortunately. So all around was bubbling a cacophony of voices. Lovely. Today's spelling word, we're going to do some spelling strategies tomorrow in tomorrow's lesson for the 10.30 people if you'd like to join. If you're at senior phase but you're not very good at spelling, then please feel free to join. You never know, you might learn something. Today's spelling word is acknowledge. I will acknowledge the fact that you're not very good at spelling. Pun of the day as always. Is this real life or is this just fantasy? <laughs> Sorry. Are we ready? Pen and paper poised. Uh, 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 uh. Get the brains ticking. First task. There's a sentence on the board that makes absolutely no sense grammatically. Our exam understanding the questions approximately in really half the... Now I'm not drunk. What I'd like you to do is first task. Get your brains ticking this morning. Remember it's a muscle that's got to be worked. Is unscramble that to make a complete sentence so that it makes sense. It's a wee bit of what an understanding question is. All right, I'll give you a minute to do that. Alexa, play. Thanks, doll. Alexa, stop doll face. Cheers. How'd you get on? I'm not even in the third word. That's totally fine. Here's the answer. In the re exam, approximately half the questions are understanding. Did you get it? If you did, well done. Right, so what is an understanding question? What is the little you in that word? Really, 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 really. Ah. To understand something means to grasp the information, to obtain knowledge, to show an awareness. It's hard to try to define understanding without saying understand, isn't it? These questions demand a good vocabulary and that's why a lot of kids will struggle with this because what's that magic thing? Clues in the title, close reading. What is that thing that hardly anybody does anymore if you're under 15? Read. That's where you're going to struggle because you need to have a good vocabulary or have the skills to be able to have to adapt these questions and apply them. I'll help work out how to do that. So, the understanding questions in the exam were test your ability to read and grasp the writer's key points and what they're saying, what they feel about it, what, they, what their views are on whatever topic it is. So it's all about what, that's the key word. Don't be an umpty, don't be one of these that reads the first question, goes to the passage, reads the first paragraph, that'll do, that's me, and then you start within a minute. Don't do that because you'll find it a lot harder to grasp the whole concept of what the passage is and what the writer's view is by doing it that way. 
you wouldn't think of reading a short story, a paragraph, and then try to do the questions. You'd read the whole story or the whole poem. So it's the same in this exam. It'll make the writer's point of view much clearer if you read the whole passage. And also, you'll be able to think, why was this written? What was their main point for writing it? You wouldn't be able to do that if you'd only read the first paragraph. You'd find it really hard. And also think about the target audience. Why has it been written? Who has it been written for? What are the main points they're trying to make? Are they trying to persuade me to agree? That sort of thing. And again, you'll find that hard, if not impossible, if you just read the first paragraph. A, B, C, oh, E, D, one, two, three, ah! So you need to read the passage and question very closely to work out what the writer is saying. And there's three easy steps to help you do that. One, two, three, easy as. Number one, locate. Like location, location, location. You need to find it. Each question in the SQA paper, most of the time, will direct you to specific line numbers or a paragraph. It's usually the line numbers that helps you to narrow down and focus your answer. A wee tip for you. Do, with your pen, do a little bracket or a wee grid or something around that specific um, area or section so that you don't be one of the candidates that lose points every year they lose marks percentages because they answer somewhere else so if you do a little grid around that and then keep doing the grid as you go that'll keep you focused on the right bit Ching! should have the sound effects then once you've located you need to isolate we should be used to that in lockdown for week nine eh? we know what isolate means lonely i'm so lonely so to isolate in a close reading though means once you've got that section you need to read it and then you're trying to locate or isolate the key points so once you've located the answer you're trying to isolate the actual key idea or the key bit that's when you get your magic highlighter or underline but i prefer highlight because it stands out um if it's worth four marks for example and you've got a paragraph to read a big paragraph my advice would be do all the isolating first so find those four possible answers if even more if you can it's good to have a a, a bigger range so that if you find one's tricky to put in your own words you can use another one highlight as many answers as you can in that you know if you've got three marks look for at least three i would say you'll try and get more than that <coughs> rather than i found it I'm going to go back to my paper and write out the answer. Then go back. Where was I? You know, so it saves time if you do all the highlighting in a row. Then you've got it all highlighted. Then you go to your paper and start doing the next stage, which is translate. So I've located, I've isolated, now I've translated, or I'm translating. So once you've found those answers, this is the main bit. The trickiest bit as well, unfortunately. This is where you need to put what you've got highlighted in your words. Over the years, I can't imagine how many kids have thrown away percentages after percentages because they've just lifted the keyword of the passage, right? If you've been at home for nine weeks and you've got a parrot, you've maybe let it, you've maybe trained it to say a word. So it'll say, got a leg here, got a leg here. That parrot doesn't have a scooby doo what a got a leg here is. It's just repeating something that you've said. And that's the same in the Rui exam. If you're just copying what's in front of you, that is not showing that you've understood it, is it? It's just that you've put it from there to there. Well done, but you're not going to get any marks for that. So it's about finding it and then thinking, how can I put that in my own words? So basically, you're trying to think of synonyms. What's a synonym? Do I have that on my porridge? No, that's cinnamon. A synonym is a word or phrase that means pretty much exactly the same as that word. For example, skinny <laughs> is the same as thin, that kind of thing. So it's words that have the same meaning. So that's really what you're doing in the Rui exam. You're trying to think of alternative words or expressions that mean the same. A couple of top tips for you. Don't try to change the words robotic style, so whatever you've got highlighted, don't go 
change that word, change that word, change that word. It's only the keywords you need to change. Plus, if you're changing it a word, a word, a word, it might not make grammatical sense. If I draw your attention to Friends, the TV series, if you're a fan, there is an episode, if you haven't seen it, just, you know, Google it and have a little you laugh at it, where there's a character called Joey who's not the smartest button in the box and he writes an adoption letter on why this couple, his friends, should be, you know, why they're good candidates for to be adopted, eh, sorry, to be adopters. So he translates, they are warm, nice people with big hearts. That's what he originally wrote, got hold of a thesaurus and then changed it to, they are humid, prepossessing homo sapiens with full-sized aortic pumps. Now, say what? So you get, that's, that's what I mean. Don't change a word at a time. It doesn't make sense. You have to look at the whole phrase and think, what, the, what do they mean by that whole thing? If you're struggling to think of another word because you don't have the vocabulary, you think, I don't know how to say it. Remember, it's not a word for a word. So if you had written, you know, if you've highlighted kind, then you could write, um, they like to give all their things away. Yeah, or they are very good natured towards other people. You don't need a word for a word. It's just try to put it in your own words. If you're struggling to think of a word though, or another word, Think of a contrast. So if you were saying she was kind, you could say she wasn't cruel. Or if the passage said it was hot, you could say it certainly wasn't cold. Or, for example, he was always well behaved. He was not naughty. Not naughty. Right, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. Try and have a wee practice. So put these in your own words. We've got a list of words at the left and then some sentences on the right. So what I'd like you to do is think of alternative words for small, difficult, blah, blah, and then try to put those sentences into your own sentences, but changing the key words. All right, so obviously looking at the first one, the boy was misbehaving. The key words are, hopefully you've shouted boy and misbehaving at the telly. So I'll give you two minutes to do this task. Good luck. Alexa, play. Guess who's back? Back again. How did you get on? Did you find it okay? Hopefully you managed to scribble some answers down or say them out loud. Here's some I made earlier. Possible answers. So the original is in purple on the right. Small, little, difficult, hard. Kind, caring. Strange, peculiar. 
beautiful, attractive, pretty, whatever you want to say. Possible answers for the sentences, I feel like a, a weather girl. So the original, the male child was naughty, the boy was mis... Sorry, I'll start that again. The boy was misbehaving becomes... Excuse me a second. Yeah, the male child was naughty. I've done it the wrong way around, <laughs> sorry. The waitress was rude. I've changed that too. The restaurant server was impolite. These lessons will be free. These classes are running without charge. And the little boat was being battered in the strong wind. Changed that to the small ship was thrown about in the gale. That's just my examples. You obviously might have written more. So when you're writing an answer down, remember one mark is one sentence. At higher, you'll be writing a little bit more detail. At not five, you may not even need to write a sentence. Sometimes a phrase will be enough. Pay close attention to the number of marks. That's just as important as the question itself is to know how many marks you're writing or how many things you need to say. That's why writing in bullet points is the way forward. So you and the marker can see at a glance that you've written enough. So if it's sometimes worth five or six uh, in the Rui paper, so just do five bullet points and then fill them, fill that gap. So here's a wee example of what you're going to be expected to do in the exam and how to use bullet points, how to use the locate, isolate, translate formula. In one year, Chloe Gibson has spent three and a half grand on watching Ed Sheeran perform 16 times. She's such a regular concert fan that she believes he now recognises her as an acquaintance, if not a friend. So she thinks that Ed Sheeran now sees her as a friend. So sample question. Write down three facts that tell us that Chloe is a huge fan of Ed Sheeran. Fuck off. Looking at the locate, isolate, translate formula then. So remember... You have to locate, so that's obviously, you don't really need to do that here because I've put it up on the, the PowerPoint for you. But if you're in the exam, you'd be looking at that particular paragraph or section. Then you need to isolate. So basically this is a bit where in the exam you need to get your pen or highlighter and underline or highlight the three facts that tell us that Chloe is a huge Ed Sheeran fan. So just a wee reminder. This is what it says, in one year she spent three and a half grand, blah, blah, blah. So what I want you to do is just spend one minute shouting at the screen. Give me three things, three pieces of information there that tells you that she's a huge fan. I might even just give you 30 seconds. Alexa, play. <laughs> stop right hopefully you've come up with the following so she spent three and a half grand watching him that doesn't show you that she's dedicated I don't know what does she's also seen him 16 times and the last bit is the fact that she believes because she's seen him so much he now sees her as not just an acquaintance but a friend so step three, if you were doing this in the exam, is the translate bit. So now that you've got, now remember, you don't need to write down what it says in the passage. That's just for you to see. So I've just done that so that you can see what the original was in red and then what you should be writing down in black. So only write down the bit in black, basically. So if you've, so the bit underlined was spent three and a half grand. So the way to change that, paid a lot of money watching him play. Or perform then watch them 16 times change that in your own words she has seen him she has seen him in concert on numerous occasions and lastly she thinks that Ed Sheeran knows and likes her right that's the idea of friendship or being a, an acquaintance so she knows them well and that's it hopefully that's been useful for you today and you can start to tackle those understanding questions that make up approximately half the paper if you haven't please like join the aim higher facebook page and youtube channel 
I would love it if you did. And tell everyone you know so that I get globally famous like Joe Wicks. Without the pecs and the six pack, I've got a 18 pack. If you're not on uh, Facebook, remember to join the groups and you can get access to resources that you can do at home to get a wee bit more practice on own words. I'll be putting up some sheets on how to, you know, that you can practice at home. Then that's the information on the screen for joining the different groups. So this is obviously for S4 to 6. That's the code that you need to join on Google Classroom to get access. And I'm doing these out of the goodness of my heart for the Lockdown Kids of Scotland. If you would like to show your appreciation, please chuck me a couple of quid. And that's my PayPal address there if you felt this was useful. Okay, that's it for today. And thanks very much for joining me. Okay, thank you. Bye. Alexa, play.